Good morning, everyone. Hoping I'm out there enjoyed their weekend. We've got a mega blocking type setup that's really taking shape in the week ahead and what all that means going forward. So let's start off with the overall setup. On the North American view this morning, you can see this significant trough that's really taking shape over a good part of the upper Midwest. And that is the culprit of bringing down some very cold air down from Canada and even some snow in portions of Wisconsin, as well as into Michigan and much cooler condition. In fact, a lot of rain in this area. And then at the same time, we also have another trough that's taking shape over parts of the West Coast. They're going to be getting the action with much cooler conditions and rain entering back in the picture off the West Coast. But then that ridge of high pressure will be starting to build over a good part of the central states. In fact, yesterday down there in Phoenix, they actually hit a record high temperature of 102 degrees. That tied a record high all the way dating back to 1943. And that ridge will slowly shift and build and expand across the central U.S. in the week ahead. So underneath that, like I mentioned, we've got snow flying even this morning with winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings up there in the UP of Michigan and Wisconsin. That continues to dump very heavy snow for that region. And where that low pressure is, they're still dumping a lot of rain and even in the portions of Maine this morning. In fact, they've got some flood warnings issued up there for them. At the same time, we've got another area, a pocket of instability where that trough is going to be moving in. And then now we have renewed flash flood watches in portions of Nevada. But notice in the middle of the country, it's high and dry underneath that ridge of high pressure. And you can actually see this on the overall surface map. Yeah, look at that spin action happening up there in the upper Midwest. That keeps dragging down. Look at that 979. That's pretty rare for this time of year, folks. This is May. And yes, we've got late season snow up there in the UP of Michigan. I've seen some pictures that you guys sent me. I greatly appreciate it. But that continues. It takes a while for this to wind down. But again, it's just the completely the opposite where you've got that sinking air and sinking air heats up quickly. And that's exactly what's going to be happening in the days to come across the middle of the country. But yes, underneath that, it's got a lot of rain associated with it. Just within the next 24 hours, it's still going to be pumping a lot of energy. And you can actually see this circulation pinwheeling around dumping some heavier rain across a good part of the Ohio Valley back into the mid-Atlantic states and up here in the north northeast getting into New England where they do have those flash flood warnings in place with several inches of rain, even three to four inches possible up there into portions of the Portland region. And so if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and you're in. You get all my daily content on this channel. And if you're in the market for a weather station, I definitely highly recommend the Tempest Weatherflow Weather Station. It's the one I've actually had myself for three years. I know a lot of people have taken advantage of this on this channel. I greatly appreciate it. The cool thing about it is it's all solar. It takes 10 minutes to install. So once you set it up, it's basically a set and forget it. You don't really have to touch it. I've had mine three years. I've never done anything to it. <laughs> I just get to access all the data and you can get to be a part of 45,000 now that have the, actually have the Tempest. You can be a part of that community. I have a desktop version as well as an app version on your phone. And I do have a discount code of 10% off and free shipping. So here is the link and I'll definitely have this in the description below so you can easily click on it and possibly order one for yourself. But take a look at what the setup happening going into the Wednesday timeframe. So we're going to still see that upper level low still trying to wind itself down into a good part of, of the Northeast, still dragging down that colder air and the rain and all the instability and the more unsettled conditions. And then we have another significant trough that's really going to be building up here in the West Coast. It's going to take its sweet time, but again, it's going to pump in a lot of colder air and even some rain back in the picture for a good part of California. But as this just tries to move inland and, and heads a little bit further east, it's going to pull in some of this Pacific moisture and eventually going to turn the winds around to the southwest and eventually maybe some tap into some energy up here into West Texas going into your Thursday time frame. So here's the overall picture on your Thursday setup. You can see this Omega blocking pattern really taking shape for a good part of the week. So we basically have 
three spokes of energy we've got this one spokes of energy out out east that gives you all the unsettled conditions and the more you know rainy unclement type weather and the same thing happenings out there at, across a good part of the west but it's the completely the opposite across the middle of the country we've got all the sinking air the high and dry air it's pretty hard pressed to squeeze out any precipitation and this type of atmosphere especially for today tomorrow uh, uh, wednesday there's going to be subtle signs of change as we head into late Thursday, as this trough gets a little bit closer to the central US, that could be enough lift to overturn the atmosphere. So you can see the significant trough, it's still pending out westbound. This is the setup on Thursday, but as it pinwheels a little bit further east towards the Four Corners region, it's gonna have enough lift in this short wave mechanism down here in the portions of the Southwest that will pinwheel across a good part of West Texas and able to provide enough lift to cause some portions of that area to get some severe weather. So here's the overall setup. You can actually see this on the jet stream. It's pretty indicative right here with this, this dominating low pressure center that's really locked over this region. It takes all week to get rid of it and the same thing is, happens out west and again the middle of the country is just kind of high and dry and the longer that high pressure just kind of sits there it's going to you know sink it's the sinking air and it's going to really heat up this atmosphere in a big way so here's the setup on thursday like i mentioned it could have enough instability in the atmosphere this is a conditional risk and what i mean by that is if enough instability is to overcome the capping inversion the warmer air aloft then the atmosphere could uh, overturn. So it's right now it's a 20 to 30% probability of this happening. But if it does, we got some supercell thunderstorms that could unload down here in this region. That's why this looks like to be a, a pretty wide swath. But again, you could only take, you need one or two supercell thunderstorms to, and to pop in this type of atmosphere to cause some significant hail out here into uh, west texas and as this moves further east it's going to run into that stronger cap and inversion and squash should squash a lot of the activity as it gets further and further and closer to portions of north texas but yeah like going into the day on friday that heat will be building all week long and i think by friday some of these areas are going to be seeing your hottest temperatures of the year with hundreds showing up on the map in a in portions of south texas and with that southwest wind you got the down sloping wind that comes off the rockies there that heats up very quickly and we could be high enough to hit convective temperature here's the latest icon guidance i mean the record's 95 degrees in dallas fort worth on on friday and the icons hitting at like 98 99 i'm not sure if we get that high but we're going to be touching pretty good we should get a, a spike once those winds turn west, westward off that down sloping wind it's the hottest wind they typically get in that part of the country and so yes that could be enough where you see we could hit convective temperature down here in portions of texas where the atmosphere would overturn the dry line gets a little bit closer and then boom supercell thunderstorms could erupt in this type of atmosphere with a little bit higher uh cape probabilities uh, more convective available potential energy in this atmosphere down here in portions of Texas. So we'll have to watch this. You definitely have to watch this down here, especially Thursday out here in West Texas. But going into the day on Friday, it still has that higher end capping inversion, that strong cap to overcome. But yeah, temperature is pretty prevalent. If we do, in fact, creep past the 95 degree mark, we definitely have the greater probability of breaking that cap and could see 20 to 30 percent probability of some some isolated large hail type thunderstorms so you have to be concerned about late in, late in the day so here's the overall setup on the breakdown so you've got that setup on thursday right this hits portions of west texas there's your dry line sets up across portions of western oklahoma and western texas and then you have a strong capping inversion as it pushes eastbound noticed on friday gets a little bit closer dry line gets in closer this may be enough to overcome the stronger capping inversion and then definitely by Saturday, I think by then, 
I think that's the best probability to overcome that cap and then have some stronger thunderstorms down there in portions of Oklahoma as well as into Texas. So I think that's how it's going to play out for your Thursday, Friday, and Saturday time frame. Because once you go into Friday, Friday time frame, there's got a little bit more moisture to work with down here in portions of Texas. Notice the 70s. That's rare. We have not actually seen that so far this season. This is typically fairly normal as we go into May. You've got a lot of heater. You've got a lot more heat to work with. Obviously, once the south winds turn around, then the dew point's able to increase and have a little bit more moisture. So yes, if it does happen to break the cap, you could bring out some pretty heavy thunderstorms. And this lifts further north into Arkansas, as well as even, even into portions of Missouri and headed into portions of Kansas. So this whole area has to be on alert for possible uh, stronger thunderstorms as we get into that Friday time frame, And then going into Saturday, I think it's a more of a likelihood, especially down here in portions of these regions, where the atmosphere is probably gonna be overturning. Uh, so there's not much activity for the next couple of days, but once you start getting into Thursday, Friday, and this is your this would be your Saturday time frame, your greatest probability of seeing some stronger storms, I think, in the week ahead. So here's the overall breakdown. So between now and Thursday, the main setups are underneath that trough that's impacting a good part of the upper midwest as well as into the northeast bringing all that unsettled conditions and then out west you have the same deal underneath that trough you got all the unsettled conditions and then by thursday you start to see the beginning stages of some of this activity that could overcome the capping inversion down here in far west texas could ring out some precipitation for them but once you include later Thursday, Friday, and especially going into Saturday time frame, then you have all this instability through the weekend across the middle of the country that that would be, you know, tapped into and then ringing out on that Northwest flow type setup. So the main instability and the highest probability of seeing any rain this week between Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday would be down here in the central part of the country. But before that, it's pretty high and dry. <laughs> But going into next week, I think things get really a lot more unsettled. So we're going into May. This is severe weather season. It's almost prime time severe weather season. So I think even this week, you get in a little bit of a lull, even though we have several opportunities for possible severe thunderstorms, but definitely head in the next week. I mean, heat is going to be dominating over a good part of the country for this week, and that's going to fuel the upper levels. And then once we go into, say, that Wednesday time frame, I think the atmosphere really starts to change. So we have another system that's going to be coming across the deep south, across the southern plains. I think we have to be concerned about uh, severe weather and stronger thunderstorms. We also have a northern side where we're going to have a trough digging in across portions of Montana and back into the Dakotas. And these could be some big time uh, straight line wind events that's coming in that's come in from the northwest and that dives southeast so we'll have to watch two areas of concern especially as we go into middle of next week for severe weather and a lot of unsettled type conditions again with the higher dew points creeping a little bit higher up 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 here into portions of iowa getting into illinois i mean typically the the, the, the mark is about 55. So those 55 degree dew points left all the way up into central portions of Wisconsin. So we're probably not gonna be talking about snow anymore. We're gonna be talking about severe weather possibly even up there into Wisconsin. So it's gonna be changing in a big way. So we got that omega blocking type setup this week, but going into the next week, it rapidly changes in a big way as that goes away. And then a, another active type setup moves in and it's a lot of vertical lift. So this is definitely concerning. You're going into a lot of areas that have the, the wettest time of the year. And then week two definitely looks a lot more unsettled. I mean, look at the vertical lift depicted on the green. So you got to have an upward rising motion air to produce showers and thunderstorms and possibly severe weather. And you're going to have a lot of that locked over a good part of the U.S. going into that that 10th through the 15th time frame it looks extremely unsettled across a good part especially for the southern plains and the central plains and down there in the southeast it look, definitely looks unsettled and you could be looking at some very heavy rain type setups even types of some flooding type of events so it definitely looks a lot more unsettled uh, going into next week so i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video 
definitely hit the subscribe button and catch the next update. Wire protect you before and after the storm.